And the fourth member of the group, Senator David Osmick, was elected in 2012, was elect, began service in 2013. Thank you for laughing. <laughs> Served 10 years, legislative days, 3,422, I present me. So, um, I'm ready. Um, you know, I, one of my personal heroes is President Reagan, but I'm not going to quote him. I'm going to quote somebody, another president, um, maybe more infinite, Im, infamous, but he gave a very uh, touching farewell speech. Uh, Senator Nixon, when he was leaving, made two comments that have stuck with me today. One is that you will never understand, I'm paraphrasing, you will never understand the lowest depths unless you have been to the highest peaks. Um, that is true, very true. Uh, I did everything I could to screw up being behind this desk, everything I could do, <laughs> and I still achieved it. It has been an honor and a privilege to be your president for this year. Wish it would have lasted a little longer. I've tried to be as fair as possible with both sides. Uh, I think I've achieved it or come close, even though Senator Latz may disagree with me from time to time. But I think we both uh, have a great deal of respect for each other. Uh, another comment that Senator Nixon made was talking about a French word. We don't have an appropriate word in the English language, it's au revoir. This is not necessarily the end of my journey. You never know what comes up next year or the year after that. And I think all of us may think that way. When one door closes, another one opens. So now to uh, acknowledge a few people. First, the front desk staff, who have been wonderful to work with. Uh, my committee administrators that have been victims of OSMIC, uh, Allie Eilers and Darren Lee. Uh, true story, uh, one time I threw Allie under the bus in front of some lobbyists inside of the, or people, I don't know if they were in lobbyists, in, some, in front of them in my office, and <clears throat> she, they left the office, she closed the door, and she let loose on some F words and just told me where, and she was right. She was right. I didn't do the right thing, and I immediately went out, and I apologized to the people involved because uh, we have great staff, and we need to treat them as great as possible. To the real victims of OSMIC, um, my six legislative assistants who have been through with, with me through the years, uh, started with Peter Mavis, uh, when I got here, uh, I had a reputation, I guess you might say, and started the second day when I sat at that desk and started railing on Senator Bach and the, the, the changes to salary structures that took place. And, uh, Peter Mavis got me by hook or by crook. Uh, he, he was sort of like, you know that, you know that, uh, uh, that, seen in uh, Charlie Brown's Halloween, the great pumpkin thing where all the kids open their bag of candy and they all dump them out and Charlie Brown, what'd you get? I got a rock. I was the rock. Or at least that's what was presented to him. Uh, over time he realized that wasn't true. Uh, David Frazier, Alex Bjorn, Nick Morgan, Owen Neubauer, who spent the most time being the victim of OSMIC, and the final victim of OSMIC, uh, Pete Globa. Uh, wonderful people. Uh, and I cannot forget, I almost did, uh, my executive assistant, Wendy Avisto. Um, all great people to work with. I've been in elective office now for 22 years. 11 here but on a city council for just short of 12 years. That's 22 years, or in legislative years, as we call them in dog years, it's about 140. 
Um, sometimes it's felt that way. Um, it was great to be appointed to the council uh, in Mound in, on December 11th, 2001. Uh, I blame um, two guys, Mark Hannis and Bob Brown. Uh, you jokers did something and here I am, and here I'm leaving. Uh, I've got a couple of friends that have been with me since grade school that have always been able to, every time I got a little bit crazy, puncture me. Um, Brad Janowski and John Lentz. Then, of course, my wife, Kari, my daughter, Christine, who's 26 today and off the health insurance of the state now. <laughs> and Samantha. Um, I told you a story when I started here behind this desk about a kid from the prairie. Um, I didn't tell you the whole story. You know, I came home from the hospital, spent the first two years on a trailer on a farm that I might be moving to. We're working on rehab of a, of a farmhouse. But <clears throat> I didn't tell you the whole story. Um, little David was rambunctious, you figure. And <clears throat> we had farm animals at that time. And I would get into all kinds of trouble. And they put a bell around my neck to keep track of where the heck I was hiding or doing. And I would be found in the chicken coop. I would be found in with the pigs. I would be found every place. Because as a two-year-old, that's what two-year-olds do. Uh, so another little story on my way out the door. But I say that so that I can say this. If you do not reflect upon your past, you will never appreciate your present or your future. It has been wonderful. Senator Bach, I'll say again, he gave me something special the very first, I think the very first day. He reminded us, reminded us and I, he might even say this in his speech, so I might be upping him, how many people have come through that door as senators? About 1,300 in the life of this building. That's important to note. It's important to note how many people actually have served this body. This place is about relationships. And I think the last two years, it's been very difficult for us to build those relationships. Uh, I hope that the next Senate and the le next legislature is better at doing that. And for those of you who are relatively new, that you can more experience that because it is a place where relationships matter a lot. And then... During the, uh, during the last couple of years of the last uh, term, uh, Senator Dibble and I have something very much in common. We lost both of our parents. I think both, we both lost our parents in the last cycle. Um, I know my parents would be happy that they saw me behind this desk. I thank you very much. <laughs> 